So hi guys and welcome to another design pattern video. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate the observer design pattern in Swift. So let's start with some definitions. This pattern is used where there is a one-to-many dependency between objects so that when one object changes state, all its dependents are notified automatically. So the key players in this pattern are the subject and the observer. A subject may have any number of dependent observers. All observers are notified when the subject undergoes a change of state. So in this video, we will look at Swift's NS Notification Center class. And this is what we will do. We will create two simple view controller objects. One of these, the subject, will publish an event. And the other view controller will exhibit interest in knowing when the event is published. It will also take certain action once it is notified about the event publication. Sounds straightforward? Okay, let's head to Xcode. Just one more thing, guys. If you like this video, don't forget to check out our cool Swift video courses. Apart from videos, you will have access to quizzes, reference material, discussion forums, and yes, certification. So if this sounds interesting at any point during this video, click here. All right, guys, let's start by creating a new Xcode project. And this time we will choose a tabbed application and let's call it Observer Pattern. Let's create it. And at this point, I'm going to go to the main uh, storyboard section and just tweak the aesthetics a bit. So from this video onwards, I've decided to focus a bit more on aesthetics. Uh, not that I'll get it right, but at least I'll try. So we'll select this first view controller out here. And firstly, we will, we will remove size classes, keeping size classes only for the iPhone. And now let us go uh, to the tab view controller scene. And what we'll do is just open this up here, highlight the tab bar, and I want to change its color. So as you can see, I'm going to make it uh, from its, its uh, default color. Let's go out here to the bar tint and make it a purple. Okay, so that's purple for you. And because of that, we need to also change the color of the tab bar buttons as well as the text. And for that, I'm going to go out here to the identity identity inspector and add, add a runtime attribute and we'll call uh, the tint color and change its color to white. Okay, so the white will be a bit more obvious on the purple background. So that done, I also want to go to the views of each view controller, the first and second one, and also change the background color. So let's go to the attribute inspector out here and change its background color. So I'm going to make it a gray. So let's go to other out here and select this color out here. And that's the hex code. And we'll do the same thing for the second view controller. Again, going to the view section and changing the background color. Let's do it once again. Let's go to other out here and change the background color to a gray. Great. So now by default, each view controller comes with these labels. So let's remove them first. So I'm going to the second view controller and removing both labels. And now let's go to the first view controller out here and also remove the two labels. So now what we're going to do is essentially go to this first view controller and drag and drop a label first and then a button. So let me do that. So here's my label. So let's first change the label text color to white so that it's more obvious against the grayish background and also increases the font. So I'll first change the font style to make it thin and also its size, let's make it a 24. Fine, okay. And let's also stretch this label a bit. And the text within the label, let's keep it in the center of the label. And the label itself, let's keep it in the middle of its container, which is the super view. So I'm going to check both horizontal and vertically in container. And we have some warnings out here, misplaced view, so let's fix that. And now you can see it's in the middle. That done, let's go ahead and add a button. So I'm going to get this button out here, drag it and drop it here. And we'll also change its properties, making the text 
Uh, let's go to the attribute inspector, make, make the text white and also the font a bit larger. So let's choose semi bold out here and also make it 26. All right. And I'm going to, yeah, let's change the text of the button, make it uh, use notify. And the button itself, I'm going to fix it at a certain vertical distance from the label. So let's move it up. Yeah, this looks fine. And let's just add a vertical constraint. Oops, not that. And let's add a vertical constraint. Vertical spacing, sorry. Right? And we also need to set uh, this button in the middle of the container. So we'll do horizontally in container. And there we go. No errors here. Oh, there is a warning but. So let's fix this. Oops, we got another one. Do we fix it? No, we don't. Let, let's leave it for the moment. Okay. So essentially what we are doing here is by clicking the button, the notify button, we will send a notification to both the view controllers. So both the view controllers will observe, uh, will have observers for this particular notification. And on receiving this notification, we are going to add a piece of text on the labels on both view controllers. So that, in a nutshell, is the plan. Okay, so now let's go ahead and add a label to the second view controller quickly. So let's search for a label and drag a drop, drag and drop our label out here and again change its attributes. So firstly the text color as well as the size. I'm going to make it slightly big. Should we leave it at 24? Let me think about it. Okay, this should be thin and let's stretch it out. Okay, this since it's the only label on this view controller, I'm going to keep the text in the center of the label. And let's make it 26 out here. And also, as before, horizontally in, and vertically in the container. And once again, as before, fix this misplacement. Great. Okay, so we have a little warning out there, but I'm going to leave it for the moment. Okay, so that's fine. So my aesthetics may not map with yours, but that's okay. And if you th think the color choice is bad, let me know, please. <laughs> okay, so now let's go out here to the project. And I'm going to add a new file. So basically, I'm this file, I'm going to create somewhat like a, like a global file. Uh, it'll be a structure. I'll call it my not notifications. And this file is just going to have uh, variables, string variables. It'll, it's going to be a struct, uh, string variables listing out the various notifications I can trigger. So in this case, I'm just going to have one notification. Let's call it broadcast. And its value is broadcast. It's, it's a static string. So basically a class variable. And yeah. So now let's take a step back. Okay. So here's my, uh, my notification. So there are three things that have to happen. So this is a notification string. It has to be str uh, triggered at some point. Okay. So I've got to create that trigger. And once it is triggered, all those who choose to observe this notification, will be intimated and on getting that intimation the view controller can take certain actions so that in a nutshell is what we're going to do but before that let's go here to this view controller and remove code we do not need so i'm going to remove that command uh, function and also well let's leave that for the moment okay so let's go to the main storyboard out here and highlight hide the section uh, the the navigation section and we'll go to this first view controller and we will create firstly an uh, interface builder action against the, the notification button. So not the label, the button. Okay, drag and drop. And we create not an outlet, but an IB action. Okay, so that's an action. And let's call it do broadcast. So whenever the user clicks on the notify button, this action will be triggered. And let's also create an outlet to the label. And why do we need that? We'll come to know in a bit. And let's call this outlet my label. Okay, let's arrange things a bit. Okay, let's let's go back basically. Let's go back here, close the assistant editor, go back, open the file view controller. And uh, now in I need to create, get an instance of the NS notification center, the object that does all the hard work and basically the magic essentially. So I'm going to get uh, a singleton uh, instance and so let me create this I'll call create this notification center variable and I'll call notification center and get its stat, uh, defaults called the default center method which will give us a single uh, NS notification center instance and we'll use this instance throughout our code 
So the first thing I'm going to do is on clicking when the user clicks that button, I'm going to post a notification. So basically it's going to post a notification. Uh, and what, what is the notification? And here I'm going to add my notification string by calling my static variable and the object will be self. So why self? Okay, I want you to maybe look at the NS notification center reference class reference documentation and try to find out why did we use self. Okay, so that done. Now my notification is going to be posted whenever I click on that button. But and basically all observers will get a notification once it's triggered. But where are the observers? So let's add one. So the first observer is my first view controller itself, who is not only posting the notification, but also is interested in getting to know when it occurs. So in this view did load function, I'm going to add an observer. So for that I use the notification center instance and I use the add observer method. And let's do that. And as you can see, it takes four parameters. The first is self. So who's the observer? Self. That means this class itself is the observer. Okay, so what happens once it gets the notification? It calls a selector function. And that function is called notify observers. It's not there yet. We'll get there. And what is it observing? Okay, what is this class observing? Which, which notification? So at the moment, we've just got the one notification, but then it need not be that way. So in this case, I'm going to create, just copy this, yank this. So this is the notification it is interested in. Okay, and then finally, we add another self here. Why? Again, I leave that as an exercise for you. Right, so there we go. An observer is added. So now we need to cater to this notify observers function, which will be called whenever a notification broadcast goes out to this observer. So I'll call notification observers. Does it take a parameter? Um, yes and no. So again, something for you to find out. So all I'm going to do in this function is change the text of that label. So I'll call my label text and just say I got notified. Okay, so this is oversimplifying things to a great extent. But you can just imagine the power of observation of observers out here, right? So just think of all the, the cool things you could do. So I'm also just going to quickly uh, uh, make my code a bit more user friendly by adding uh, these mock keywords out here. Okay, so what does this do? Let's go click out here. As you can see, it neatly organizes or provides headers for our various methods and properties. So just uh, pretty helpful as your code grows. Great, so now let's go to the second view controller and we're going to do something similar. But before that, let me go to here to the main storyboard and uh, also open up the assistant editor. And we need another outlet to the label. Right, and this time the second uh, view controller label. So let's drag and drop. I'll call it my label, create an outlet. Okay, so let's go back and open up the second view controller. And let's clean up some code which we do not need. Remove this function or this comment, sorry, also. And now all we'll do is we go to the first view controller. Now, this is a notification center. It's a single instance. I want to use that in the second view controller also, but this is local to the class. So let me yank it out from here. And uh, d -d -d -d. let's go back to the first view controller. Let's yank it out again. And let's uh, create it globally out here so that it can be accessed by the second view controller. There could be better ways of doing it. Perhaps I could have used it in the app delegate or other ways, but let's leave that for now. And I'm going to yank this add observer method and copy it in the second view controller so that it also becomes an observer of this broadcast notification. And this one more thing I need to do out here. Uh, yeah, I'm also going to yank this before that. Let's yank this function and paste that function also here. Okay, so that done. Uh, let me change this text. So I'll call it I got notified too. So that's the second view controller. And I'm just going to go here and change this self to nil. And I would like you to think about why I did that. Okay. So that done, let us go ahead. Okay, so this is, uh, I'm going to add some mock keywords again out here. And as you can see, the code is organized better. Now let's trigger the uh, the simulator. Okay, so here are what both the uh, notifications look like. And let's click on this button. I got notified. I got notified too. There you go. 
both the observers are kicked uh, kicked off and both the observers call their respective functions and we get this the label is changed to provide us this value so all that is good but another good practice is once both these uh, view controllers are uh, removed from the system, we need to also remove the observer. So it's a good practice to go to the DNet deinitialization method and call the remove observer method of our notification center. So I'll call remove observer out here and I'll call this method out here that re removes all observers of this particular class. Okay, so let's do the same thing. Let's copy this method and also paste it in this other view controller out here. And as before, we will add a mark keyword out here just to organize our code. Let's move this down a bit and add it. Good. And let's copy it and paste it there in the other view controller. All right. So now let's quickly test things once again to see if nothing is broken. So again, first view controller, second view controller, click the notify button. I got notified. I got notified too. So guys, this brings us to the end of the session. I hope you found it useful. It was to provide you a quick overview of the observer design pattern and the NS notification center in Swift, right? If you have any questions, please do ask. Thanks a lot and bye for now. Thanks a lot for watching this video, guys. But please do not forget to subscribe to this channel, like and comment on this video and share it with people who might find it useful.